Hello, beautiful, soulful beings. I want to talk about language today and language through a <clears throat> multidimensional perspective. <clears throat> Please forgive me. I have a client session in about an hour and um, there's a lot of uh, energetic architecture that is nearing me for their session. And so that can sometimes mean that um, I'm clearing things as well through my body in support of that person in their session. So it's possible that there'll be like dust and things coming up. Okay. So language, just as there are dialects that exist here on earth, right? Different languages and also different like flavors even inside of the same language, like with accents, right? Like someone from New York <clears throat> versus someone from the Midwest, there's going to be a different flavor. Okay. If you're like a feeler, you can you understand what I'm saying when I say flavor or texture, you can feel the difference. You're not just hearing the difference in the accent itself. There's flavors inside of it, right? And we can look at this like even cultural aspects are coming through the flavor of the language, right? Okay, so let's take that and let's start applying multidimensionality to it. There are different languages and also different dialects that are built into a variety of multidimensionality and also lineages of multidimensionality. So like I can come into contact with someone whose multidimensional lineage, and now when we're talking about multidimensional, right, we're talking about variety. So you can have a variety of dialects with inside of you. And then we can also hone in on a particular dialect or a particular lineage that has a particular flavor and texture and dialect. So I can come across people that they have a particular uh, they are holding a lineage that also overlaps with one of my lineages. And because of that, we have a similar way of languaging things. We have a similar way of understanding things. Okay, now we want to also bring in telepathy. Telepathy is a form of communication. And when we're talking about multidimensionality, lineages and all of this, telepathy is a big part of that. So it's like someone could near me. And they, in having a same or similar coding inside of them that is representative of a particular lineage that's coming through them, right? Like, let's say that it was a, a priestess lineage. And in priestess lineages, there's all kinds of lineages too. So let's say that it's like a priestess lineage, and that priestess lineage was a part of the rose lineage. Okay. Someone is nearing me. When they are speaking to me in like human word, they can be using same or similar language for particular phenomenon or topics because you are inheriting that coding and that coding is being translated through the human experience and the experience of words and it can come out in same or similar word form. Because we're all just trying to translate and deduce down, okay, this big thing here, how am I going to get that to feel through my word like it is up here to the best of my ability? So when it comes down, it can turn into a same or similar word that someone is using. However, it may not because we're all, we're receiving this information if you're actually connected into a particular lineage. And you're moving through experiences and then you're reducing it down into word form. And so you might end up having a different word for a same or similar phenomenon than something that I 
that I also know, but have a different word for. At the same time, where there is telepathy, there's there's an ability to translate and to feel into and understand another person's language, their English language, for what it is that back here they're actually talking about. So it's like they can present a different word, but you can feel that they actually mean this thing right here. And it's not an assumption, which has a lot of misunderstanding in it. There is clarity in the lineage, in the connection, in the understanding. I see you, you see me. We are, we are bringing through something same or similar in this particular way. And therefore, the pathways of communication and understanding one another have widened. I can tune into you more and you can tune into me more because we're both rooted or founded in a same or similar lineage. This is a place of deep connection between us. Therefore, we can understand one another at a much higher level, even if we're using different terms, words, for a phenomenon or experience. Okay. Then there can be difference. So I've talked about similarity here and some of how this can translate into language. And this is also bringing in like frequency, right? We're talking about frequency. We're talking about harmonics. It's like, oh, the flow of energy and information is so easy between us in this particular place because we're holding these foundations. I understand that frequency. I understand the symphony that is moving through you. I also hold a same or similar symphony. So similarity. Now we're going to talk about difference. I can come into contact with a variety of people and I can understand them because I'm highly telepathic. I can tune into soul essence. And I also have a massive variety that lives inside of me because I am an original and old soul. I've had a lot of experiences with a variety of different dimensions, proximity points in creation, species, et cetera. And so in that, I'm able to understand a wide variety of people because I have points of connection and understanding that I can meet people in. And I also have skills to see and feel and connect in with someone's essence. So that helps bridge any kind of gaps that there might be for us to really understand, or for me at least, for me to understand the other person. And... I also, though I meet people of variety, multidimensional variety all of the time, I'm exposed to that and I can meet a variety of different people. There are also those who come in with frequencies that are in dissonance with my own. That doesn't mean necessarily wrong or bad. Now, there can be some of that like benevolent or malevolent, right? There can be some of that for sure. But it's like an example. In my core, in my makeup, my nation of origination is the original, the original <clears throat> elementals. So where the elements formed, that is where I come from. And this means that I have a very organic makeup to me. When I come into contact with, again, this is an example, with um, people whose, some of their coding is more tech-driven, artificial intelligence-driven, extraterrestrial, artificial, their language for things can be vastly different than mine vastly different that doesn't mean that i can't meet such people and understand them because i find that i typically understand um to depths that just it's not usual right it's unusual i have an unusual skill set to again meet and see people and so they can explain something to me or use their own languaging 
And I can also ask questions from points of reference that I have, and we can bridge the barriers. We can bridge the gaps. However, there can be frequency disruptions that don't allow us to meet at a depth where if those barriers weren't there, I can meet other people. There's a kind of fluidity that isn't there that I know very well with so many other people and multidimensional beings that near me. A lot of people who near me, they're like picking up very particular frequencies and they're like, oh shit, she's, she's got the code. She's the real thing. She has this and this and this and this and this and this. Like they just immediately know. I will have people message me. They see a, they see my page and it's like, they're like, immediately they know I must work with this woman. I know this woman. She's going to unlock so much with inside of me. Like I just deeply trust her, right? They can see me. So I talked about frequency and I'm talking about symphony, right? And like even like coding and similarities and like, it's like there's truth coding. Okay. A lot of my people have been ones that have been through many incarnations on earth. I also find that newer to earth star seeds also near me. They want a really nice foundation and they want support and helping to land to earth. And I'm able to support them in that. But a lot of my people are those who have incarnated and reincarnated on earth. And they also know me from prior incarnations on earth. And therefore, we do have these, these intersection points where we're able to see and meet one another. There's like deep soul level resonance, even if like at first or only one of us kind of sees, oh, I knew you from here, right? There's, a, there's the feeling first. There's the recognition through the feeling first. So many of us have gone through uh, collapsed timelines that involved artificial intelligence. It may not even just be on earth. It could be off earth as well. And, um, and many of my people are like, they're the ones that really work with the elements. Like you could be like a really watery original kind of being. You understand water intelligence and how to work with the technologies. I support people in discovering those parts of themselves. And then it's like, okay, how do you use that technology? Oh, I'm seeing you do this, this, and this. Okay. So I can meet people in those, those spaces. I meet people again in many spaces. So if you're not hearing yourself in the examples, don't exclude yourself. The likelihood is I can meet you. <laughs> okay. So what I'm saying is, is that there are Many of us who've moved through timelines that where artificial intelligence had become a really grand disruption and the technologies themselves were misused, they weren't, they were, they were not used in conjunction with the organic, the integration of the organic, the um, element of the mother with inside of the technology. They weren't used to care for all of life. They ended up being misused in disregard to life. And that became very problematic. So there can be stored like kind of information, but also trauma and pain points where something like artificial intelligence is going to like rub us wrong. Okay. I don't want this to be in like a us versus them, non-integrative kind of perspective. We need to make sure that we are we are opening to the fuller nature of integration which houses truth and expansion so i'm not saying artificial intelligence is wrong and bad outright that is not what i'm saying i'm saying that there are those of us who have had experiences and who understand the actual damage that can be caused from that we store that in our bodies or our memory and this can be challenging when we're faced with that kind of, um, those kind of frequencies. <sighs> okay. 
So I could be connecting with someone who they are much more for something like artificial intelligence. They have this kind of art, like um, artificial intelligence and extraterrestrial kind of intersection that that's pretty common. And they're using different language than me. And though I can understand them, there can be harmonic disruptions to our connection that don't allow the level of fluidity that I might have with someone else. And there's karmic load, right? There's karmic load to every lineage, <laughs> to every species. And when you're on earth, it's going to be amplified even more because this is a planet for alchemy, high, high, high level alchemy. And that alchemy is integration based. Look, y'all, you can't have consciousness or embodiment without integration. Integration is the thing. This is why my group is called the integrative evolutionary and this is this is my mastery. I teach, see, experience through integration at levels that are unbelievable until you near me and you get to know my work. And then you're like, oh, whoa, I see how she's doing this and making all these bridges and connections, especially through my immersive experiences. So the karmic load, right, will be housed and held within each lineage. If you have a lineage that has this um, like kind of extraterrestrial artificial intelligence kind of component to it, then where those things went awry, you are the holder of that. And until you unravel that karmic load and all that that means in order to get it down to this root form where the missing elements such as the deeply organic caring for all of life this like it's a level of i don't have a word for that in this moment because it doesn't actually apply to what i'm trying to fully say but like it here on earth it doesn't have a it doesn't have the humanity piece in it it doesn't have like the essence of soul in it right so like we you, you we want to build bridges where it's like okay technology is beautifully inter integrated into higher harmonic spaces of truth that include the organic that include also the mother element like we want it to be like this okay then it produces incredibly fruitful, beautiful things. But if you have the karmic load, it's like a bunch of threads that are like a knot and it's like all knotted up, right? When things are knotted up, they're not harmonic. It's distortion. Okay, it's distortion in the field. So when someone has those kind of knots, because they're carrying this kind of lineage and makeup and they near someone like me that is carrying the components that are needing to be integrated into those pockets. It It's like the harmonics and then the disruption, they're interacting. And it can feel like disruption to the one who's holding the distortion. So like that's where projection is created. It's like, oh, something. I don't like the way I feel around you. It's because my, my makeup, when it nears you, naturally starts to unravel and unwind all of that threading that is knotted up. And that is an uncomfortable process but it doesn't mean that it's untrue. Now, here's the challenge. If you hold that kind of karmic load, some of what you're needing is to be able to detect when something is made of truth and that there's love in it and there's liberation in it and there's the mother element in it. But if the missing element is those things, you might not be able to detect that that it's near you 
it's like, I don't have a point of reference. I don't have a point of reference. So I have to grab onto what I have a reference for and then try to make that about you. Okay. So it's like the cross wires here in this bundle start cross wiring here. Now, on the other side, for someone like me who's holding the elixir, the medicine, like the healing component, the organic, the mother, a very, very high concentration, that can feel like I can I sense the distortion to a much higher level because I can feel it, I can see it. I'm being asked to support in the unravel in it, but unless this person is coming to me and saying, I value you so much and I'm consenting to this process, it can't honor me. And that becomes an issue when you don't honor the mother. See, isn't that a part of that root ball? That's, that's a missing element, the honoring the mother. So I actually can't dance with you because unless you come to me in the right way, I actually can't provide to you, you'll reject it, you'll resist, and you'll project it. So now there's unconscious, subconscious requests, there's distortion in the field, there's disruption to my harmonics because in the relational field, the symphony isn't able to flow and move. And we want the symphony to flow and move. Look at this. You see how I'm doing this? I'm a grandmother weaver. I weave with those who near me at very high levels. And so where my energy goes, it really, really matters. If someone comes in and they have a same or similar lineage, which those lineages also carry karmic load, right? But I'm an alchemist in that. And that person's meeting me and there's way more fluidity. We can do this. We can create, we can repair the DNA. We can repair the structures, the architecture. We can bring back in the true remembrance. We can clear up the distortion in the Akash Ik. If you're familiar with my, my work, you probably know I say, Gaia told me, Ashton, take out the Ik from the Akash because that is the distorted record to then access the Akash, which is the pure record. So I can bring these things all the way back into their original purified books. Now we're moving something. Do you see how in the prior example, energies like this, there's so much resistance energy that the movement, the translation of the languages of the lineages intersect, it's becoming and it doesn't allow for the proper movement. Is this not similar when you're talking to someone and they don't understand your language? You're like, I can't meet you. We can't meet each other. I want us to meet one another, but like we're not meeting. And because we're not meeting, we're not meeting within frequencies that are ready, prepared, willing on both sides to dance with one another. It's like, how do we connect? Right? You can't see me. Maybe I can't see you. Oftentimes for me, it's I'm seeing the other person. They're not seeing me. That that just is my reality. The unfortunate set of circumstances that comes with being a seer and someone who can deeply meet others um, in a space where that is uncommon. So like when we're in, let's say a relationship, let's say that it's a romantic relationship. Okay. And you've been flowing with it. Like you're like, yeah, we're connected. Otherwise why be in the relationship? Right. And then it's like, ooh, something has popped up here. There's a distortion in the field. It could be coming from both parties because something is dancing together now that is here to illuminate, to bring to surface the distortion. It could just be honestly on one side. It can be one-sided that the distortion is coming up because if someone's holding a higher harmonic, they're holding the elixir. That is the medicine that this person's distortion is really needing to be in contact with in order to liberate from it, right? But like, let's just say in general, there is a distortion. There is something. There's some kind of shadow material, subconscious material. There's something icky or sticky. It's not quite clean and fluid. It shows up in the relationship. 
and you can be in a conversation with a partner and you're both speaking English, <laughs> right? But it's like, you're like, I'm not being heard. I'm not being heard. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Right? There are barriers inside of the communication. It's like you're existing at different frequencies. You're like, you feel like you're living in a whole other dimension than the other person. Sometimes it's like, what? That makes no sense. And you just want for the other person to hear you, to see you. Because truly at the core, both people want to be met and to meet one another. That's what is wanting to take place. But it can feel like you're so distant from one another. Well, this also happens, and we're talking about language in this conversation, right? This happens because there is a language barrier that is frequency-based. You're not in a symphony. It's like, right, on a TV or a radio station that's like, it's off. You feel when you are in a symphony with another, when you are co-creating through life, when you are matching and meaning and weaving and dancing and flowing and, ooh, it's juicy. This is what I do with people because I'm a grandmother weaver, right? So it's like my jam. I love meeting people there. Let's go. That doesn't mean that you're not going to near me in the work and the distortions isn't going to come up, Right? Because the more you touch base with high harmonics, the more the distortion is going to come up. Because we're we're living in a, a, a duality inside of this dimension, right? Like contrast itself is informative. And so you'll be presented the, the thing that is contrasting whatever you're holding. So if like you're holding really high harmonics, the distortion is going to be, you're going to be even more sensitive to it. And it's also going to like mirror it more because contrast again is a mirror. Okay. So these are just some things that I wanted to talk about relative to language. Um, and I want to come back around to kind of the beginning of this conversation. When you are entering new spaces of awareness you could even be like newly awakening. There is a learning curve relative to language. Like you will not know what people are talking about. There are people who like near me and they feel something. They're like, okay, I'm feeling something. I don't understand the language though. And so I want to say that just because you don't understand the language doesn't mean that that's not a true path for you. It just may be that those aspects of you haven't even activated yet. You could actually like be drawn, for example, to someone like me because the truth of your soul, your more expansive nature remembers and knows, oh, I know that frequency. I know that lineage. I know that coding. But your mind and where you're at in your embodied conscious process doesn't have points of association in your the light of your awareness just yet. And so you're drawn to me because your soul wants to be activated. You want to be activated in your lineages. And remember, I have a lot of access points to a lot of different lineages. So... I want you to approach this through an inter, uh, integrative, through an integrative lens, as always, with me. In that, feel the frequency. Okay, feel the frequency. When you're feeling the frequency, also drop into yourself, be present with yourself, get curious, observe, because. The frequencies that 
I may be holding as an example, using myself as an example, may be both resonant for you and drawing you near as well as activating points of distortion in your field. And you don't want to get those two things confused because when you do, you will reject the medicine before you. You will reject, and when you reject, you project. So it's kind of like breathe, deepen, soften, right? Don't throw swords. I get those all day long. Don't throw swords. Drop back into yourself and more deeply listen, explore, get curious, discover. Because if you do, those knotted up threads will begin to unravel with inside of you. And when that happens, there are openings inside of your soul and your soulscape. There are truths that are going to descend. And as that descends, the light of awareness comes in. And as the light of awareness comes in, you're going to be able to see more clearly yourself, the distortion, the truth, and also me. So this is where you might start to see yourself shift in the relationship of like what you're feeling in proximity to me, as well as you'll go, oh my God, I didn't understand what she was saying before. Now I do. Now I do. Okay. So that is the topic for today relative to language. If you have found this helpful, interesting, anything, share, 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 share my work, please share my work. And if you have received value, know that I'm always available for financial donations of gratitude. You can go to my link in my bio. If my person and my and my words and my work resonate with you, then also go to my link in my bio to explore the ways in which you can work with me. I'm always available for messages relative to inquiries about the work. Because if you're like, I'm feeling called and drawn, but I'm not sure what pocket of work can you help me sort through your service offerings, helping me navigate what is going to be best for me? Reach out to me. As always, so much love to each and every one of you.